WCBI News at 10 starts now. Stop the violence. That was the message this evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Selena Schaefer. An area church organized a march in memory of Quinn Walker, the Aberdeen teen who was killed this past weekend. The march started in Aberdeen at Martin Luther King Street to Clay Street, the location where Walker's body was found. Pastor Cedric Doss Sr. says that city leaders and residents need to come together to find a solution to end the amount of crime in their city. So everybody in the city of Aberdeen can come out and stand as an army against violence in this area. To lose a young person that hadn't had the chance to grow into a grown man, little Quint, that lost his life to senseless violence, is to bring us together and show that we have to stand as a community of people and come together and try to prevent these things from happening. Toss says that they hope to plan more events like this one in the future. Tupelo police are searching for suspects in a late afternoon armed robbery. Officers responded to the area near Wilson and Baker Streets after someone reported being robbed. The initial call said shots were fired during the robbery, but so far police have not found anyone that was hit by gunfire. The alleged robbery victim was found and the investigation is ongoing. The parents of a seven-year-old are arrested after Tupelo police find several drugs in their vehicle. Jacob and Jamie James are both charged with felony child endangerment, along with possession of meth, ecstasy, and heroin with intent to distribute. K-9 officers pulled the couple's truck over at I-22 and McCullough Boulevard about 10 p.m. on Tuesday. Jeannie James is the child's stepmother. The child was taken from the scene and is now with family. Bond for the couple was set at $50,000 each. Columbus Fire and Rescue is busy packing its gear to assist in the deadly Lel Floor County plane crash. The department's hazmat truck and communications gear have been requested by the military to help with security and communications at the crash site. Eight members of CFD will be meeting up with three people from West Point's fire department. Assistant Fire Chief Dwayne Hughes says the department's advanced communication radio is why they were requested. As part of a regional response team, we have members that are trained in overland search and rescue, and uh, they've been requested along with our communications vehicle, which is one of the uh, few vehicles that is able to tie radio communications between military and civilian. The two teams will be leaving from Columbus early tomorrow morning. Time now to turn it over to weather for our first look with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Keith. Selena, it is rainbow season. Showers and thunder showers today. Those have gone by the wayside right now. But earlier this evening, check out some of these great rainbows that were spotted in the area. Not too bad at all. If you got a shower, you may have seen one of those. And then on the back side of those, we saw a pretty nice sunset at the GTR airport. So about six o'clock, we had a big batch of showers and thunder showers around, and that has really gone away. So you can see we are quiet. We are looking ahead here. More heat, more humidity, more pop-up storms and high heat indices, the full forecast in just a few minutes. A stronger national and state economy is having a positive impact on Northeast Mississippi. WCBI's Allie Martin has more on a mini boom in commercial development in a popular part of Tupelo. The lunch rush is on at Witch Witch Superior Sandwiches. It has been busy since the restaurant opened at the intersection of Barnes Crossing Extended and North Gloucester two months ago. I think we impressed our uh, franchise uh, business consultant just because I think this was part of the one of the biggest openings he had ever been a part of. Craig Gregory could have opened the restaurant anywhere in Tupelo, but he chose the North Gloucester Business District because the area is a people magnet. It attracts people from from other areas, it being a regional shopping area, and uh, so you you encounter uh, people from diff even people from different towns and and cities uh, to come. Especially with our our concept, it's a new concept. People are not aware of it, so. Um, with, with this spot here in Tupelo, it, it brings people that uh, we might not have encountered or not, might not have a chance to try which which before. As Director of Development Services for the City of Tupelo, Shane Hooper wants to see all parts of the All-America City bring in commercial development, but he understands there are unique qualities for the North Gloucester area. 
First of all, the sheer number of cars that pass by this location on a daily basis. That's one of the primary things that a developer is going to look for is traffic count. The latest figures show 22,000 vehicles a day travel on North Gloucester. Those numbers have also helped spark commercial development near Witch Witch. Aldi grocery store is going up across the street. Around the corner, a Zaxby's is being built, and next door, a second location for Bank Plus. Another factor driving commercial development is a business-friendly attitude at City Hall. We have rules and regulations that we have to follow, but we do everything that we can, and that's part of what the mayor has done and instilled in our department in development services, is the ability to get to yes. How do we make this work for business owners? What do we need to do to make it more, more to make it easier for them to open a new shop? And Craig Gregory and his business partners also operate the Papa John's in two below on West Main. By Labor Day, they plan to have this vacant space converted into a second Papa John's. It's right off of North Gloucester. In Tupelo, I'm Allie Martin, WCBI News. The new businesses in the North Gloucester area mean hundreds of jobs for the locals. Starkville City leaders in Octibaha County supervisors plan to come together to discuss the future of a proposed industrial park. The two boards hope to have a joint meeting in the coming weeks to talk about how to pay for the nearly 400 acres of land just north of Highway 82 along Highway 389. The meeting will also include Golden Triangle Development Link CEO Joe Max Higgins. The project remains in litigation. Property owners adjacent to the site have appealed the circuit court's rule to uphold the city's decision to rezone the property to the state Supreme Court. The meeting of the two boards could decide whether to continue pursuing funding for the project. Businesses and community leaders come together in Columbus to celebrate another year of success. The Columbus Lounge Chamber of Commerce held its annual awards luncheon. Several chamber programs were highlighted. Volunteers, businesses, and members were also honored. CLCC President Lisa James says this is a small way to show appreciation to the members. The chamber is vital to the success of the business community here. Um, if you want to be a successful business in Columbus, you need to join the chamber. We're doing amazing things to minimize roadblocks or speed bumps in the business climate so that you can have a successful um, business. Awards included Volunteer of the Year, New Member of the Year, and Small, Medium, and Large Businesses of the Year. Work is almost complete on a bridge that has been an issue for years in Columbus. Crews have been working on the Deer Run Bridge for about two months. Project planning has taken about three years. Ward 6 Councilman Bill Gavin says heavy rains have washed the dirt under the bridge and for several years and it needed to be replaced. The bridge is the only exit for residents on that road. A ribbon cutting cer ceremony is scheduled for next Wednesday. Some Aberdeen residents will head to the polls next month for a special election. War II older woman Lady Garth retired from the board on June 20th, meeting to maintain her state retirement benefits earned from her years in the Aberdeen School District. The special election will be August 15th and is only for the War II seat. Interested candidates have until July 25th to qualify. The new Aberdeen School District superintendent is settling into his office. Superintendent Jeff Clay started his new role on July 1st. WCBI's Dory Talley sat down with Clay to find out more about his plans and hopes for the district. Education is a subject that Superintendent Jeff Clay is very familiar with. The Tupelo native is moving on from working at an A-ranked school district to a C-ranked district that's had two years of clean audits. If he can, you know, get the school to where the one where he's come from, is, it'll be super. The school board's vision for the district and its growth opportunity is what brought Clay to the Aberdeen School District. We want to continue with the interim assessments, so we want to make sure that we know where the kids are at points in time. Um, we just want to make sure that we're doing the things that are in the best interest of the kids all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that we're engaging our community. Clay's ultimate goal is to keep pushing the district and its ranking forward. The number one school district in the state and that, that's the goal that we're gonna, that's gonna drive us and, and we're gonna wake up every day 
striving for. This retired teacher and current Aberdeen teacher believes the district is heading in the right direction. I know that um, based on my past experience as an educator that sometimes you need new lifeblood into a system and so I'm hoping that he will bring some new fresh ideas into our uh, district so that our students can be on top. We as a public service, we're going to be under any any uh, boss we're going to be working for and we are excited to work. Now a meet and greet reception for Superintendent Jeff Clay and Aberdeen School principals will be tomorrow evening at the Magnolias. The first school board meeting with the new staff will be this upcoming Monday. Maybe a pool party tomorrow to stay cool. You may want to think about the pool before some of those pop-up storms. Obviously, if you see a storm come indoors, 91, that's our forecast high. The full forecast is next. First alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Some pretty good downpours across our area today. Look at this one, you're Starkville, and those downpours gave rise to some pretty nice rainbows. You can see this mini rainbow right there near the ground with some of that rain coming on down in Starkville. And here are a few other rainbow pictures from earlier today. That one near New Hope, and here's another one. I think this was from, uh, I don't think this was the one from Clay County. I think this was uh, from the Columbus area. Suffice to say, another pretty nice one. And of course, your four-legged friends want to get out there and soak up this great weather we had on the back side of some of those showers. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, our email address, weather at WCBI.com. So, Here's our cool time lapse from Columbus. It went by pretty fast right there. As we check it out again, you'll see that very heavy shower that was moving through Starkville right there, dumping that heavy rain. And once that sun got low, the clouds and the showers just went away. And that's what goes on this time of year. I call it rainbow season because we tend to see a lot of rainbows with the activity that pops on up in the late afternoon and early evening. Right now, no issues whatsoever. We are dry around here. Spotty activity, if you see color on this map, that means we got a little bit of rain in those areas, and let's come on in a little bit tighter to Starkville, anywhere between one to two inches right there, and a little burst, and also out towards West Point, too. Some spots saw some heavy rain. Most spots did not today, and all of that goes away once we lose the sun and all that daytime heat. The storms that will sustain themselves during the night up here across the high plains and the Great Lakes yet again. So tomorrow we are looking at more pop-up showers and storms, a 30 to 40 percent chance during the daytime heating. Same story into your Friday. We can just copy and paste this forecast into your Saturday and Sunday too. So rain chances 30, 40 percent through the weekend, maybe a little bit drier as we get into next week. And temperatures across our region right now as we fly back on into the Twin States, pretty comfortable into the 70s. Our lows tonight down into the low to mid 70s, so just a few more degrees. Upper 80s by noon tomorrow, 91 at 4, but it could be a little bit cooler in the afternoon if you see one of those storms or showers a little bit earlier. Here's our 7 day forecast no major changes. We know the drill. It's mid July, highs generally in the low 90s. I didn't mention this, but the heat index could range anywhere from about 95 to 105 during the next seven days, so pretty warm, pretty steamy. There's your 7 day forecast. All of the ghost of coaches past, Houston Nutt is filing suit against Ole Miss. Tom has details a little later in sports. Welcome back. With these summer temperatures that Keith was just talking about, almost any type of exertion can cause dehydration. Tonight's Health Talk with Baptist, we talk about some of those main causes. Hi, I am Lee Richardson, a physician in the emergency room at Baptist Memorial Hospital, Golden Triangle. Dehydration occurs when there isn't enough water in your body to replace what's lost throughout the day. Your system literally dries out. Sometimes dehydration occurs for simple reasons. You may not drink enough because you are sick or busy or because you lack access to safe drinking water, such as when you are traveling, hiking, or camping. Dehydration also can occur when you have severe acute diarrhea, which can cause tremendous loss of water and electrolytes in a short amount of time. If you have vomiting along with diarrhea, you lose even more fluids and minerals. Children and infants are especially at risk. Other causes of dehydration include fever. In general, the higher the fever, the more dehydrated you become. Excessive sweating. If you do vigorous activity and don't replace fluids as you go along, you can become dehydrated. Hot, humid weather increases the amount you sweat and the amount of fluid you lose. But you can also become dehydrated in winter if you don't replace lost fluids. Increased urination. 
This is most often the result of undiagnosed or uncontrolled diabetes, a disease that affects the way your body uses blood sugar. This type of diabetes often causes increased thirst and more frequent urination. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist when we will discuss who is at risk for dehydration and how it is treated. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. The hard-charging Stallions of South Lamar are the next stop on the high school football tour. We preview the upcoming season next in sports. Five seasons ago, the South Lamar Stallions experienced a season of futility, going 0-10. The Stallions have charged back with three straight seasons in the postseason, looking to make it four in 2017. Alabama Week rolls along as South Lamar is the 24th stop on our high school football tour. WCBI 60 Schools in 60 Days is brought to you by Toyota, Let's Go Places, and Emerson Animal Hospital, where your pets are family in West Point. Year one of the Clay Gillum era at South Lamar is in the books, and year two has all the promise of bringing more success for the Stallions. I learned a lot last year with uh, how well the guys responded uh, with the way I coach and all and our assistant coaches, how well they did with them, uh, and I was really proud of them. One thing when I came in was try to change the culture and all here, um, you know, to get in the weight room year-round, and that's a big key. And then just getting everyone involved here in the community, you know, once you start winning ballgames, everyone's going to support you, and that's a, that's a big key to our success here at South Lamar. A first-round exit in the postseason was a disappointing end for the Stallions a year ago but brings added motivation to the offseason. It motivates us a lot in here to get better, bigger, and stronger. Focus is a lot more better this year, a lot more better than it was last year. This year I'm just going to try to do the same thing as last year, lead the team the best way possible, and I hope for the W's the whole way out. Plenty of talent will be returning for Coach Gillum this upcoming season, and the experienced Stallions believe this could be the year for a serious title run. We got our running back buster, like he said, he explosive, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot of more young guys with a lot of more talent, and, you know, that's going to help us out majorly. I feel like this is, this is the year we can do it. Go back to Brian. We go to Brian and they win a championship. I feel like this should be the year. South Lamar's season begins with a Lamar County showdown with the Bulldogs of Vernon. In Millport, Tom Evel, WCBI Sports. 60 Schools in 60 Days with South Lamar High School was brought to you by the Bank of Vernon, Shop and Save, Vernon Dental and Alpha agent Alicia Clark. Former Ole Miss head football coach Houston Nutt is accusing the school and its athletics foundation of conspiring to defame him. The federal lawsuit filed Wednesday says current head coach Hugh Freeze, athletic director Ross Bjork, and others orchestrated a publicity campaign to blame Nutt for the school's NCAA investigation. Go to our website, WCBI.com, to read the lawsuit in its entirety and for the university statement on the lawsuit. We'll hear from the Ole Miss Rebels tomorrow at their SEC Media Day, but the Alabama Crimson Tide joined the madness on Wednesday. Head coach Nick Saban says he'll never forget the last second loss in the title game to Clemson, and now the Tide are using it as motivation. Posters can be found of the final touchdown all over the locker room, adding extra fuel to the fire as the Tide look to make another title run in 2017. You know, when we get tired, we got to work harder. You know, Coach Carkin always says, you know, Clemson is right there. You know, don't jump off sides. Don't jump past the line. So, you know, that motivated the team a lot. And, you know, I think we really, you know, 
you know, we, we got that in the back of our head, but we know we're, we're, we're really focused and ready for this season. The shot heard round the basketball world takes home an SB. Mississippi State women's hoops won the award. The biggest upset, of course, by knocking off undefeated UConn and ending their 111 game win streak in the final four this past year. It was a good night at the ESPYs for Mississippi State. It went two for three. Dak Prescott took home the award for best breakthrough athlete. And unfortunately, that shot you just saw didn't win best play. For some reason, I can't agree with that decision from the voters. So going back to the high school football tour, coming up tomorrow right here on WCBI Sports, we'll preview the defending region champion, Lamar County Bulldogs. That preview of their season will be coming up tomorrow right here on WCBI Sports. We'll have a last for your forecast coming up after the break. All right, here's our seven day forecast. Warm and humid weather for the next couple of days. Some spotty showers and storms. Some of you may get soaked, other spots may not see it. Warm and humid, highs in the low 90s, lows into the 70s. And don't forget, tune in tomorrow morning early, 4 30. <laughs> Alex will have the updated forecast. And Amanda, I should say. Uh, Alex and Amanda teaming up tomorrow as well. well. There you go. If you're up for the sunrise, can make sure to catch them because I'll probably be sleeping. We'll be sleeping, yeah. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thank you guys for staying up with us. We hope you have a great rest of your night. Take care.